if you can take money and buy a diamond necklace. The people who support you, they don't even have proper water to drink. The people who are the core of your fan base. Malaria is killing them. Qatar is killing them. Almost everything bad is in their area. Welcome to The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. This is your most informative sociopolitical and personality interview program you can find online. My name is Ismail Akwe. In this edition, our guest is going to take us through some music. He's bringing energy into the studio and also going to give us some important news about his life and also give us the lowdown about his business. He's also a media personality, a poet, and all you can think about in the art industry. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe, and our guest is Black Rasta. Black Rasta. It's, yes. It's yes. great to have you here. Well, it's my pleasure, you know. You know, when I see you in your attire, <laughs> you... you, you you, 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 you come out as Pan-Africanist, and nobody can take that away from you. Mm. Who has been sewing your clothes for you, and how many do you have? Well, I have a number of them. I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, well over 20 years now. So, I mean, we have a number of people who, I mean, want to sew for us. Mm. And we have many more who just feel like, well, they want to support the movement. Mm. So they come on. And it's, so, yeah, so a number of them. And you know. does anyone style you, or do you have any special uh, uh, accessories that go with them, each clothes with the accessories, or you don't look at the colors? Well, once in a while, I just pick up something and I wear, as long as it feels good and it looks good. Mm. You know, yes, I'm okay. I mean, I move more with the, I mean, power of the environment. Mm. Rather than matching the color, I match the feeling and the environment. Yeah. You know? Sometimes I will wear a red mm. over some pink mm. and over some blue. <laughs> some people will find that to be too colorful. Yeah. But they all admire the rainbow. So and you, rainbow? I mean, do you admire the rainbow? <laughs> I do. And I do admire the rainbow. You, you you support the bill or you are against the bill in parliament against uh, I mean uh, the, the homosexuality bill that uh, was tabled in parliament? My rainbow has nothing to do with homosexuality. Mm. My rainbow is the rainbow I see in the clouds. Mm. My rainbow is that thing that signifies the end of the flag. My rainbow is that measure of colors that will attract you at a go. It has nothing to do with man sleeping with man, mm. nothing to do with man sleeping with animals, nothing to do with man sleeping with babies. Mm. So that is the rainbow I love and admire. Do you support a law against man sleeping with man? For me, I first want to understand why a man would want to sleep with a man. Mm. From my readings, it is because Human beings want a certain kind of freedom as to who they can love and who they would not want to love. Mm. Reading from the past, it tells me that when a man wants to sleep with another man, it's madness. In fact, just recently, in Germany, there was a hospital for gay people, a man who wants to sleep with another man. And great philosophers attributed that to mental imbalance. I live in a country that is called Ghana, and there's a chief psychiatrist... Dr. Kwesi, who says that it is madness for a man to sleep with another man. In other words, there's a mental imbalance somewhere. If I go by what he says, then I think that a man sleeping with another man is totally abhorrent, is not normal, and for that matter, these people need to be taken to a place where they can get help rather than supporting a bill that has to do with in balance of the mind. So no jail by hospital? Jail, no. no. No jail at all. I mean, somebody is not well 
and then you take the person to jail. Mm. It's almost like the drug addicts that we have. Mm. But because of the silly laws we have in this country, because our laws were bequeathed to us by racists who were uncircumcised, we all sit back and support these laws without putting our faculties, I mean, to the wheel. Yeah. It is very sad, my, my um, brethren, that somebody is hooked on drugs. He needs help, then you throw him in jail. Same way if homosexuality is supposed to be an imbalance upstairs, then the homosexual needs help. Rather than jailing the I don't support it at all. Mm. Mm. Jail for what? No. Yeah. Do you take the malaria patient to the hospital mm. or you take the malaria patient to jail? If I have TB, is my place the jailhouse or the hospital? We have to think. You see, it's the same thing I keep talking about animal rights. You see, a lion who has been kept so hungry, the lion would not eat until polo grounds a horse is sick and they think the horse is dying. Then they call zoo. Hey, there's a horse here that is dying. Then they come and carry the sick animal and give to the lion to eat. A lion that can go around the whole big jungle is now limited to a small, tiny cage, a prison that I call it. You see that? You have starved the lion. You have taken the freedom of the king of the jungle. You have depressed the king of the jungle. And a certain man jumps into his cave. And boom, something happens. And people are making noise all over. They are not looking at the rights of the animal. Mm. We have people who catch the animal, slaughter it, and eat it. What kind of zoo do you want to see in Ghana? Because our zoos are oh, not confined. Hallelujah. I don't want to see zoo. Mm. Zoos are a prison. Human beings go to prison when they are culpable. Human beings go to prison when they are seen to have broken a certain law that is prisonable. Human beings go to jail because they commit a certain crime. What crime has the lion committed? What crime has the zebra committed? The crime is that it lives in the jungle. Therefore, because of human greed, we want to see the lion. And we don't want to go to the home of the lion and see the lion. So we bring the lion from the jungle into our home, imprison it, and come to look at it anytime we want. And you want to go to heaven. Which heaven? Which God is going to put you in heaven? We you make, are a wicked, wicked sadist. We make millions of dollars from tourism. Oh, yes, they do. They mm. call it like Chada. There's a self-styled millionaire called Chada that I met over the weekend. He brought in some white lions. They call them rare lions. Mm. Rare breed. Deteated them and declawed them. It was published on Ghana where we all saw it. Yeah. Deteated them and declawed them. The neighbors called for, I mean... Uh, because the lions the were there crying. Mm. My brother, the lion's power is in his claws and his teeth. It is a hunting animal. What did you tell Cheddar when you met him about the lions? I said it several times over and over. I said, look, look, Cheddar. Mm. You have been cruel to these animals. You are saying that you want to help the tourism of Ghana. Nobody needs this. If tourism is all about taking the freedom of the animal, then we are a barbaric people who have come together with our barbarism to make money from. Who wants that? My brother, if you want to see the lion, go to the home of the lion. If you want to see the zebra, go to the land of the zebra. There are helicopters. Sit in them. Fly over the jungle and say, oh, this is the lion, this is the tiger, this is the this. Mm. See? You can have cameras that can capture them and you come and watch. Rather than bringing them, dictating them, declawing them, and you think that you are smart. Hey, yeah, you have the swag. Your swag is in hell. You are going straight to hell. Anyway, Black Rasta, have you always been free? I saw a picture of you and Raskimono. You posted it yourself. We're in a very long time. <laughs> and he had his dreadlocks. <laughs> have yeah. you always been like that? Before you grew your dreadlocks and uh, became the Kuchoko artist? Well, I come from a family where father was quite able. He had money. You know, I came from that kind of family where I could eat anything I wanted to eat, flow wherever I wanted to flow. Just make the grades. 
My father was a teacher, mother teacher. I had books, all kinds of books. In fact, I started reading books for universities when I was just getting out of primary school. So at least I was exposed to a lot of these things. So dreadlocks out of my family. Mm. You see, you must wear a tie. I was the first little boy to wear a tie in the Zongo, in Tamale, the Moshi Zongo. Mm. In my area in Mochizongo, it was only Christians who wore a tie. And it's a predominant Muslim area. So if you wear a tie, it means that you are Christian. You are going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of, you know, mentality we had then. Yeah. But now things have changed. So growing up, I got exposed to, you know, a few conscious people. And I understood that animals have rights. I understood that I must not eat meat to be handsome and healthy. At what age did you become conscious? Would you call yourself conscious? Well, I'll say the consciousness started hitting me when I was growing up. I started realizing that, well, I was privileged and others weren't. And I wanted to understand why. Then my father told me their parents did not take the right decision. They did not go into real life. They were lazy, some of them. See? Went into it, but at the university, I met some great Rasta people mm. like Hope Sinjeko, called Ras Shao from the Volta region, Ras Bumba, you know, and some other Rastas. We used to sit down and reason what Rasta would say, reason, whilst people puffed their thing and blew the air into the skies. We sat down and then we reasoned, and I picked up the bits and pieces. And I decided that, no, I don't want that comfortable life anymore. I don't want the life of the Thai. I don't want the life of Kung Fai Kung. Anything you want, it comes. Hey, this, it can now. Nah. I want to live a life that will teach me lessons, not the easy life. The road that is so smooth and so easy hits the brick wall. Is that when you dropped Islam? Well, I never dropped Islam. Once mm. a Muslim, you are always a Muslim. Okay. See? Why should, why should you drop Islam? Islam is a beautiful religion that I love. But I grew out of religion. Mm. I was religious. Friday, where long jalabi, I hold your tasbah, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad. Go and pray and go. Sunday, go to the church. I grew out of it. Mm. Now, the God that I worship. Is a God that created me out of himself. So when I worship God, I worship myself. When I worship myself, I worship God. It might be deep for some people to understand. But I grew out of religion. I do not belong to religions that slaughter and eat animals at random. I do not belong to any religion that cannot go to God until you wash your face and you wash your hands. No, that's religion. So you are not religious at no, all? Sir. And what no, are you? sir. I am spiritual. Mm. There's a difference between spirituality and religiousness. Religiousness is, hey, pray, pray, pray. It's time to go and pray. Hey, you wash your hands. Hey, then you go and sit down and pray. Hey, it's time to go to church. Then you run, you are in the church. That's religion. Spirituality is when inside I feel like, hey, I need to connect with my creator. Whether I'm sitting on the WC or I'm having a doggy style with my woman, I have to start praying. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this moment. I don't know why it is in me that I have to pray, but I am praying. Whatever it is, bring it out in me. Let me connect with you. What? How, why should I belong to a religion? That has to dictate to me when to connect with my creator. D does that mean you are not a Rastafarian? I don't know what it is to say Rastafarian. But what I know is that I am not religious. I am spiritual. Mm -hmm. I wear my locks because I realize that it's a certain consciousness. Remember I started by saying consciousness, not religion. Mm -hmm. So some Rasta people will tell you, Haile Selassie is God. I don't belong to that. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Some rasters will tell you if you don't smoke in tampe, ah, then you are not rasta. I don't smoke in tampe. So if you say I'm not rasta, oh, take your rasta here. <laughs> you see, take it. What we have done for rasta, the so-called rasters who smoke in tampe and worship highly Selassie will live in this world for a thousand years and will never be able to achieve that. That is where my excitement is, brethren. 
When I was raised as a Muslim, I couldn't touch the Quran until I went to pray. And I asked myself, so if I am dying and my life depends on falling on the Quran and holding it, and I've not performed abolition, it means I can't touch it. Things like that kept flowing through my head. And then I started thinking about the Bible, thinking about this. And I told myself that, hey, religion is not for you. Mm. So I decided to be unreligious but spiritual. Were you a popular person in Kenya USD? Well, I would say that uh, I was one of the most handsome on campus. So my face caught a lot of people. I didn't have dreadlocks, mm. but I had a unique face. That people said I had Chinese eyes, and a lot of the girls liked my Chinese eyes. But I was so shy, I could never approach any girl. Yeah. And because of my philosophies, people would gossip and you would get popular. But I became more popular when I started singing. I grow while so trying. Came to the university campus, and I was invited to come and perform. You started from Agro? Agro. Mm. And I started jumping and doing my things. And some of them say, Woo! You know, and I was also on campus radio, s s firing reggae and throwing all the fire. In those days, reggae was all about consciousness and spirituality and the intellect. Now, a lot of people get into it because they have no job. So it's a default. Mm. See? But in my days, you had to know the Bible. You had to know history. You had to know the Quran before you sit and open the reggae mic and say, Ja! That is why, up till now, I don't see any competitor to Black Rasta. And it's unfortunate. I'm graying. Right now, I'm getting some grace in my beard and my mustache. 47. Two days to come on 2nd September, I'm going to be 48. Where are the other ones coming up? Are you referring to the whole reggae genre or you are just referring to conscious reggae music? I'm talking about reggae on radio. On radio. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. We don't seem to have anybody. This is a guy who says on radio. He's talking in history. This is a guy who is talking entertainment. This is a guy who is playing his own music and talking. This is a guy who is talking wisdom in terms of motivation. All in one. Probably I am the only mainstream radio presenter in Ghana, maybe Africa. Who doesn't have a DJ? There's nobody who says to play music for me. Say, I don't have guests. I am my own guest. One man million. I sit and I'm doing everything. If it's history, I'm talking history. If it's entertainment, I'm firing. It's just four hours and it comes like it's 20 minutes. How do you read? How do you learn? Do you have a lot of books? How do you do it? Well, I'm a bookmaster. I love books, honestly, because my father and mother were teachers, you know? So I love books. I read anything in print. I read it. Sometimes I wake up, Ghana web, I read all the stories from business to, I just read. Mm. Because there's some kind of clock in my head that keeps ticking, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and tells me that, hey, read this quickly. You are going to go out and somebody's going to ask you a question that is answered here. So finish it. Sometimes I finish and then it comes again, click, 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 new story has come up, update. <laughs> and I end up, but I'm a reader. I love to read. How is family life for you right now? You have your own family. How many children do you have? Well, the, the children that I can count, I think I have. How many do I have? I have four, yes. Four children? Four, yes. Sometimes Are they like I you? I forget. Yeah. Are they like you? Unfortunately, my first child is not like me. He's a little slow and sometimes I get worried. I sit back and I'm like, sometimes I want to pick up a cane and creep him up into action because... You must be a lion. This is a very terrible world where people eat people. You understand? It's like the Rasta man says, dog, niam, dog. It's a dog eat dog situation. So if you want to be more and more and slow, so people will eat you. Your father is a lion. You must be a liar. But are you not the one supposed to give that child the training? Well, sometimes training is not enough. Mm. Sometimes orientation is not enough. Sometimes they grow into it. Because I know that I grew into it, but very early. 
I pray that he gets into it. We are doing our best. Yeah. But the other ones are okay. They are picking up the vibes and, you know, they are pushing the vibes strong and hot. And, and the music? You know, yeah, the music. Some, hey! You play music at home a oh lot? Oh my God. We play a lot of music at home. And I record a lot of music. In fact, I listen to my music sometimes and I say that Ghana is very unfair. In fact, the kind of music I record, I don't have peers. Nah. Yeah. The melodies I record. But I still have some Ghanaians who say, Oh, this guy don't know music, don't know nothing. So, so noisy they make. And I said, I say, Father, forgive them for they know not. When I die, then they can say, Hey, Charlie Paddy, they in, in hot. Charlie, if you black outside music be that, how come I never hear? Because we're an idiot. Idiots will not dig and find the real stuff. They are listening to noise that is inundating the airwaves. That's what they are ready for. They are not ready for research. No. The ordinary Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian is not a research animal. No. He consumes what is given to him. He doesn't pick and choose. No. The music I record. My brother, sometimes I sympathize with myself where that energy comes and I record that. Right now, I've recorded like 60 songs, three mm. albums. Mm. And I want to release them. Because you don't know when you go home. Mm. You keep them and sleep on them. Now, I release them. My brother, I'm doing really good music. That's great information you've given us. And we'll take a break. We'll come back to the music. We'll come back to the idiots. Mm. And we'll come back to the future of Black Rasta. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Okwe, and our guest is Black Rasta. So Black Rasta, you are telling us about the music and how people don't appreciate the music and how much music you make in a short time. Besides reggae, do you listen to any other genre? Yes, I do. I love African music. Mm. I listen a lot to African music and I play African music on radio as well. I mean, now we have Afrobeat. I mean, I, I listen to Afrobeat. Fella. Without listen, the S. Without the S. I listen to Afro beats as well. Okay. From the new generation. Mm. I listen to rap. I'm not a big fan of hip-hop. Mm. But I, I listen to hip life, Reggie Rockstone. Mm. You know. And, but basically, my music is reggae. Mm. And I listen to some selected dancer. The old kind of dancer. Now, the new dancer doesn't impress me at all because I think it's just trash. Oh, you, know. you don't listen to Stoneboy? No, well, I mean, Stone Boy doesn't really do dancehall like mm. that. Stone Boy is more of Afro dancehall okay. mix. I love Stone Boy's music, mm. but I do not listen to Jamaican trash that they call dancehall. Mm. Now, in the days, I would listen to Kote Ranks. See, I would listen to Nado Ranks, mm. Shaba Ranks, you know, and all the wonderful artists, Super Cat, Silver Cat. And Yellow Man, my all-time favorite. Mm. Beanie Man and all that. But now, they are doing something they call Trap Dancer. It's hip-hop list. Yeah. You just hear hi-hat. Then one dead drum beat. Dead as in, it's not live. Mm. And mm. That kind of music doesn't... And they put in a lot of effects and it's like... Rats that are running around and squeaking and nah, I'm you had, not interested. You had a lot of backlash when you released your Ama Piano song mm -hmm. and you even responded. Is it because of some of these sentiments you shared? Exactly that. You see, if I was lying, you would have cut these pants down. Mm -hmm. I love African music. When I travel to South Africa and I see the way the South Africans are enjoying their music and doing it, I'm a big fan of home. Correct pronunciation, home. G Q O M. They say it with a click of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem is Kwong. Sing ting 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 ting. You know? 
That's boom. I love it. I'm a piano. It's not too much my kind of music. I love boom. But I'm a piano along the line. Yes, it's easy to easy music to make. Easy music to make. I can make one million amateur piano songs in one hour. One million. All you need is a small hook. You don't need verses. And hey, 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 hey. That's how it goes. And did it work for you? Well, yes. I mean, I'm a versatile artist. I've recorded high life. Mm. See? I've recorded dancehall. I've even recorded... Maybe I'm the first Ghanaian artist in contemporary times to record Soka and then Calypso. I travel a lot. I was in Guyana and they were enjoying the Soka and Calypso. I said, hey, I'm going to record this. I love it. And when I came, I recorded one or two. But if you observe me, you will realize that I just touch and go. That's not my main genre. Mm. So I dropped one or two. Like Bob Marley would experiment with a rock guitar. But you won't find that in two minutes of his songs. It means, oh, I'm just experimenting. I won't call myself an I'm a piano artist or a high life artist. No, that's not me. I am a Kuchoko artist. Mm -hmm. See? I am a Kuchoko artist. Reggae music plus African music gives you Kuchoko. That's who I am. Tiff President. Is it yeah. a Kuchoko album? Yes, it's a Kuchoko song. Mm -hmm. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Tiff President, why a Tiff, Tiff, so? Thief man, why a thief, thief, so? The people, they must suffer, but you don't care, so. Thief man, why a thief, thief, so? Here it is. Mr. President, why you they lie, so? Before election, you tell me you be in jail. When you sick, you run go to London. When we sick, oh, we die for Kolebo. Mr. President, why you wicked, so? Tell me how you they sleep. At nine to the album art of Thief President mm -hmm. is very suggestive. I mean, uh, there are very familiar faces there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do yes. you think they are also getting closer to the thievery? Of course, of mm. course. I mean, you know, Black Rasta, I don't hide my things. I've said it time and again, I don't like, like this president. Nana Kufuado is the worst president we have had in this country, and he's not ashamed of his track record. He keeps going around laughing at himself. You see, I told you that I love to read. When I was a little boy reading, there was this character I read about called Don Quixote. Don Quixote. And Quixote is spelled Q-U-I-X-O-T-E. Don Quixote was a man who was seeing things which were not there. He said, I've seen 10 million soldiers coming. I'm going to fight them. You pick a spear. Hey, I've killed 20 of them so far. Hey, I see a lion. I'm going to kill the lion. I've killed the lion. You see, living an abstract life, that is Nana Ado. He sees things that do not exist. Your ministers have all flopped. Oh, your own party people are telling you, oh, Charlie, do something. I'm not. No, me, never. I like what they are doing. They are the best. You are building a cathedral. Today I was reading from Ghana Web. said, oh, now we don't have money to continue with the cathedral. So we have, you stop what? Build it. Go and build that cathedral. Well-meaning Ghanaians told you that living. You said you made a promise to God. That's the religion I'm talking about. Mm. You want to build a cathedral. When you are sick, you are in London. Your finance minister is in London treating his puffy face. We are here. That, look at how Wache died. You reported it. Are you happy? The man who sat and stood and laid on your campaign stage. He died like a little fowl in one of these hospitals. It's sad. He was on my show before he passed on. And I asked him some of his sentiments. You could just see. The guy was gone. I don't want to die like that. I don't want my children to die like that. So I have to voice it out. And try to change it. Without fear? No, sir. Or even uh, someone by parliament. Oh, someone Jesus by, have mercy. By a court. You see, where we have reached now, we grow. Where we have reached now, it's not about the court. It's not about the parliament house. Now, parliament has ridiculed itself right now. To the point that people think that parliament is a joke. And I think Ghana parliament is a joke. It is a joke. 
Look what they are there doing. Grown ass men are punching each other's pot bellies and chewing ballot paper like goats and sheep. Is that the parliament you want to see? Look at the judiciary. Ex-President Muhammad just came out and said that it's a ridicule that they call them unanimous FC. They are interested in eating goat meat as an ass exposed. Is this the judiciary I want to see? I say this, they say, come to parliament and explain what. Next time they call me, I will not even bother go. You don't believe that? They... Even if I go, what I would say there, Bridget, hmm. they wouldn't like it. You don't believe if dialogue fails, force must be applied? Because parliament, they judge or they uh, argue and put together the laws and everything. Sometimes it doesn't work out. So they have to... If you were in parliament, what would you do when it's not working? <laughs> punch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, have mercy. <laughs> I mean, it's all about the discourse. Mm. Your ideas will not be taken every time. People have voted you from the constituencies for you to represent them in good faith. Then you go and turn yourself into Bukum Bankum, boxing each other night and day. Who are you serving? The people or yourselves? In our country, we are so partisan. We are only interested in the political parties. And not in the welfare of the people. That is why they are busily trying to break the eight when our necks are breaking. So talking See? about welfare, if you were president for a day, what would you do within that period? I will not build a road. I'm not going to build no hospital. I'm not going to build nothing. I'm going to build the minds of the people. Minds. What we lack the most it's not hospitals. It's not. It's this. Rewire the minds of the people. When Nkrumah fought for the independence of this country, the very first words he mentioned after saying the independence of Ghana is meaningless, blah, blah, blah. He said, now that we have the independence, we must change our attitudes. The problem of Ghana is attitude now. We do not have what is called patriotism in us anymore. That's why a Ghanaian can trample his own country's flag. That's why a Ghanaian will stow away in a very dangerous ship to America that he will go through Lampedusa and be slaughtered like a chicken all because he wants to enter the white man's land. I did not bargain for this. We are too blessed to be cursed. Look at the gold, look at the diamond, look at the... We just discovered lithium in Cape Coast. In those areas, my brother, this will amount to nothing. Today I saw, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 what's that guy's name? The Magdan saying that salt, in Songo salt, is going to be the solution to Ghana's economic stabilization. And I said, this guy is a joker. Somebody should tell him the truth. Your gold couldn't save your economy. Your diamond couldn't save your economy. Demolishing the, the, uh, 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 that place there did not solve the, con the, the economic problem of the country. It's some salt, that bloody salt. Salt that he has gone to take. Political goodwill and goodwill from some careless chiefs, some of who have lost their faculties. I was there, I recorded all of them. What is the history of the Songo salt? What is the history? Why would one man come and divert the history of the song of Now you are saying that that is what is going to help the Ghanaian economy. I say these guys are jokers. They manipulate the people's minds. That's why I said if I was president, I would deal with the people's minds. Mm. Patriotism, right from the start, like they do in Japan, like they do in China, like they do in America, like they do in England. Here, we are only investing in big buttocks and big breasts. Go take an injection so it becomes big. <laughs> I saw, who was that? Bintu, Ajia Bintu, dancing with who, 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 who. And I saw comments there. I said, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> right now, it's not about talent. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you have upstairs. It's about what you have downstairs. Won't you pay her to dance to your song? She's a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. If I have her, I will be happy because she's beautiful. Trust me. She's a beautiful girl. Nice shape, nice face, but I think it's overemphasized. 
A, a lot of women dance to your songs and you share them. Look at the ladies who come. Like I said, I would put her in my music if there was an opportunity. But it is overemphasized. Okay. When women dance to my music, watch how they do it. It's all about the culture. It's all about the beauty of Africa. It's not about concentrating on one or two parts of the body. Shake, 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 shake. And that's it. It's done. So where do we go? My little four-year-old growing up doesn't have it. She doesn't have it. She's growing. So where are you going to place her? She will look for a surgeon, take injections, blow it, blow it, and it is the next big star who is looking for her to come and shake it in her music. No, that is too lowly. Mm -hmm. You are only good because of your body parts. Where are you going with that? You are only good because of your body parts. Hey, that is dangerous. You should be good because of your character. Good because of what you have upstairs. Because those body parts there. Anyway, let me not say so people will say that he disrespects women. Mm. Anyway, Black Rasta, you are mm. on Class FM now. Yeah, that's right. You moved from Xylophone. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say so much about it. You uh, started a YouTube show. Yeah, yeah. Black Pot. Yeah, that's right. On YouTube, which mm. is also doing well. Yeah. You are doing it concurrently mm -hmm. with the Class FM show. Yeah. How is that going? Well, it's going good. You see, I'm a hardworking human being. I work really, really hard and I do my best. So, yeah, it's a lot of ideas. You bring this, you bring that. You listen to people as well. You know, I don't just read a story on a blog. I look at the comments as well. Mm. Much as Ghanaians like to play and misbehave and insult almost anybody. The, sometimes I see my stories pub published there. Uh, for instance, oh, Black Rasta has gone to pick up an award uh, for uh, maybe flying to space. First comment somebody will write, say, ah, Teniba. Next comment, ah, you know with this foolish guy where that day, as he say, they walk like rabbit from my area. What has that got to do with my flight to the space? What has that got to do with it? That's why you have the hijab being tools and the rest controlling the universe. Papa no all over the place. Right now, it's not about... When I was growing up, there was brilliant math and science quiz. Right now, they have turned it into a comedy. When I was growing, what do you know was there? When I was growing... Speech and prize giving days were there when I was growing. Debating and drama clubs were there today. Mm -mm. It's about beauty, body beauty. Where are you taking that to? No disrespect to whoever wants to be a prostitute. Continue this prostitution, Benjamin. Prostitution, yes, go on social media, You're dancing on TikTok. Check it out when a prostitute is dancing. You can tell the difference from when somebody's dancing out of happiness. It's all about like that, selfie, and open it and hey, what dancing is that? <laughs> Breast dance? <laughs> and anyway. ten, and then, yeah, see, <laughs> like that. <laughs> she, 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 yeah, hit at them. Hey, hi. Oh, nice, good. They hit back at you. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. It's sad, Bridget. <laughs> So, uh, what do you know is on TV anyway? It's still on TV, on GTV. What do you know? Yes, it's still on GTV. Oh, yeah. I, I saw it airing there. Yeah. It's lost its lost its steam because mm. they will not give it the, the prime time that it deserves and all that. Well, it's, it's mm. a conversation for another day. Well, you went to the US. Mm. You taught for a while. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't you stay there with all the problems that Ghana has? God would have cursed me and put me in hell. Because my duty is to be able to raise the African youth. That's why God created me. I came here to rewire the minds of a lot of African people. The Americans are already there in their own capacity. Then I went and joined them because I have a privilege to meet Obama. And I have a privilege to have a citizenship and some other things. No, I won't take it. I go there. If there's an opportunity to teach Pan-Africanism, I teach yeah, the university said, stay, we love what you are doing. You are an exceptional teacher. Because whilst other teachers would come into the classroom or lecture halls with a, what's that thing called? A spray something on it. Projector. Uh, projector. 
And then I came into the class with just a board and a marker. You know, spelling and writing everything and talking with action. And they have never seen that. It's like primitive to them, but the action, the power in it. They loved it and they wanted that kind of variety. But I told them, it's time to go home and talk to my African people. Mm. And I left. And you are happy right now? Very, very happy. Being home than in America? Being home, putting pressure on the dirty leadership that we have across Africa to change. Mm. Yeah. Ukraine-Russia war. Mm. They say it's the cause of our problems in the country. You are also a social commentator. On your show, you talk about a lot of these problems and you bring the African consciousness to bear when you're talking about some of these things. Do you believe the Ukraine-Russian war is the direct cause of our problem in the country? It's a shame, honestly. When Nkrumah was overthrown and he spoke from Guinea, one of the things he said was that we brought you independence. We were just at the threshold of getting you economic independence and you kicked out this government. It's a shame. You see, why would one country be fighting? That's Ukraine. And there's no wheat in the world. Why would one country be fighting? And there's a whole lot of problems. There are so many problems all over. Meanwhile, Ghana can fight Cote d'Ivoire for as long as it likes. Tanzania can come and join and fight. Nigeria will come and join and fight. And nothing will happen to the world. How useless are you? You are adding nothing to humanity. Nkrumah wanted to change the whole Congo Valley. Change his arability into food. But we removed him. It hurts me. I'm telling you. Hey! Small Ukraine is fighting. It used to be part of Russia. Broke away. And now that is what is controlling the world. Then we are in trouble. It's lazy politics and lazy politicians mm. who say that. Mm. Well, this is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. We are talking to Black Rasta. We'll be right back and we'll talk about some other things, including Dr. Yuen. I don't know if Black Rasta got uh, any of the flask for an award and also if he is even getting awards elsewhere. We'll talk more about that after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe. Our guest is Black Rasta. Black Rasta, you're a big celebrity. Do you accept that? Well, I mean, it depends on who is talking and who sees me as one. Mm. There are people who see me as trash. Mm. See? You know, you know, I do not have control over what people think about me. Yeah. But I think that whoever I have touched positive will, even if not now, accept it, would accept it later. Mm. Some people, because of ego, no matter how positive you are and they know you are positive, they still want you to feel like you are trash. But for me, I think that I'm doing my very best for the nation. So when it comes to celebrities and also their significance in the country, what do you think celebrities should do? We have a lot of actors, we have musicians, and some of them are supporting politicians because they think that's how they can give back to the nation. What do you think is the role of celebrities? Well, I think that if you're a celebrity, that word simply means somebody who is celebrated. Celebrity. A celebrated person. Ask yourself, am I worth celebrating? If yours is to follow politicians and push them into power to come and cheat the very people that you are singing against. I heard some celebrities, so-called celebrities say that, oh, I'm not the one to train people's children. Yes, you might be right, but you have a responsibility. See? Say, oh, my music, I sing anything. It's not for me to train anybody's child. You are not being responsible. For me, I would be so ashamed if at the end of the day, my music does not bring out a certain level of positivity that will help change the nation. Then why am I here? Yes, celebrities have a lot to do. You have a lot of following. What are you doing with that following? That's why I keep talking about Shatawale time after time. You supposedly have a huge following. But what are you teaching that following? 
is insults and foolishness and fooling and all over the place. That's what you're doing. You see, I have this gold chain, I have that neck, I have this. Uh, so what? Isn't that show business? Well, show business must come with a certain level of responsibility. Yes, you are saying that the people who support you are in the ghetto. Do they have that? If you can take money and buy a diamond necklace, the people who support you, they don't even have proper water to drink. The people who are the core of your fan base. Malaria is killing them. Qatar is killing them. Almost everything bad is in their area. What have you done? I would feel as a failed celebrity or an artist if I would wear a necklace that is made of diamond and my key supporters are those who are in the ghetto suffering. I must be seen doing something for them before I can do something, even for myself. Mm. Have you built a hospital for them? If you ask him this question, he will say, am I the president? Am I, why am I paying taxes? You claim you have it. You claim you are so rich. What legacy do you want to leave behind? A legacy of hoarding money and dying and going away and living it after living comfortably? How about the core people who are supporting you? Have you cleaned their gutters? Have you brought them together to teach them how to clean their environment? Have you bought them shovels and pickaxes? It's all about, I got this, I got this. Me, I get 20 cars, so me, my house, I get 20 swimming pools for inside. It's, it's, it's too infantile. Mm. Celebrity should grow beyond that. Recently, Jackie Apia also showed her house and all those. I'm happy for her. I speak with her. Oh, nice, nice. I don't know what kind of suffering she went through to be able to build that. So I am happy for her. See? She's not a boastful kind of person. She showed her house. You understand? I believe in growing in the quiet. My people have a saying that, you see that lizard with a red head? that it hides itself so that the head can grow red. The lizard that does not hide its head for it to grow red, it dies early to come out and be doing this. And, hey, children, hey, hey, pa! It's gone. It will hide itself. It's a proverb. Did the Gombe say it? Bandwao swarlo zokar mora. Bandwao is the lizard. Mm. It hides its head, so it becomes red. So, is it right for them to also support politicians? It's not right. It's you not. don't know your work. I know when I said, oh, you went and supported Obama. Hey, is it because Obama will be Ghanaian? I said, you because you, are, you don't know. I am a Pan-Africanist. You understand? Everything black that is positive, I want to support it. It's different. You are supporting a politician so that he can support you. When some of the artists had the chance to meet Nana Kufari, what did they say? Buy me a car. I will feel so sad if I ever told that man that. You know what I would say? Nima is struggling. Please, we need something there. As for me, I can take care of myself. If you watch Titanic... When that guy was dying, what did he tell the wife or the lady or the girlfriend? Say, go! Say, I am a survivor. I'm a survivor. I can survive. The people who I'm not sure can survive are those I'm asking you to go and help. That's what it is. God is not giving the money to the people who can support the people. He's giving it to people who have no brains. That's what the Nigerians say. Money don't miss road. <laughs> yeah. God is not making people who have wisdom presidents. He is making idiots presidents. God is not giving some of the things to some people who can really change the world. He's giving it to people who can do nothing. For a reason, I will ask God one day when I meet him. You are a Pan-Africanist, as I said earlier, and you follow African politics as well. For real? Yes, and you saw the election in Kenya. Yeah, I did. Is that uh, a standard election to you? <laughs> Kenya has always been full of problems, you know? Mm. From the days of Jomo Kenyatta, all the way down. Kenya is such a beautiful country. 
its biggest export is tourism. I watch how Uhuru Kenyatta and how all those people messed up this country. And I saw how people were killed in broad daylight, all because of elections. Before their elections, America announced that its citizens should start moving out. Why? What can, is it a war zone? But that's how they degraded that country. That election was nothing but a fraudulent election, just like many other African elections. They record 101% oh, of the votes in total. Can and you believe this? It's being contested Can by you the main opposition this? leader. Fraudulent. Mm. <laughs> right from the start, fraudulent. And it's been happening all across Africa. I don't know why. Is there any single African president you can pick as a model president that other presidents should follow? Some of them have passed on. Can we talk about the living the right living now? Ones. And when then maybe Mangu later we'll talk about the dead. Magufuli just, just went away mm -hmm. a few a couple of years ago. You support Magufuli? Oh, yes, yes. Magufuli was positive in several different ways as compared to the rest of them. So you, you, you accept that there yes. were challenges, like the media? Of course. Uh, of course. Okay. Mm. Of course, he had that. Just like the Rwandan president. Kagame. Kagame. You he like also Kagame. has a problem with... Kagame is not my favorite, but mm. he has been able to do positive things that I would sit back and say, okay, he has done some bad ones, like there's no media freedom. People are abducted and killed because of their political openness, including gospel artists. See? He's fighting political families that he thinks are a threat to him. But I love Kagame for the reason that he was able to raise the country from the ashes, from the cinders, all the way into a certain space that England finds attractive to bring its unwanted immigrants to. Look at Rwanda now. Mm. What's the population of Rwanda? Like 11 million people. But when you check Rwanda, there is no day a driver would give money to a policeman and say, oh, take it and let me go. Like it happens in Ghana in broad daylight. Kagame is not joking. I love him for that. He's brought discipline into his country. In Rwanda, you cannot bribe anybody. Try it and see. In Rwanda, they are beginning to have bullet trains. A country that just came back from a civil war. That took the lives of about a million people. For a very long time, we did not even have a word called genocide. Kofi Annan could not believe that the mayhem in Rwanda had to be called a genocide. Hutus, Tutsis, it happened. Mm. But today, Hutus and Tutsis are dancing hand in hand, forget it. They say, don't tell and don't listen. Don't ask and don't tell. We have forgotten it. We are one Rwandan people. That is enough. Yes, he has his negatives. But I think that these ones, you can't find a 100% president. I think that he's not bad at all. Who is your worst president alive? Worst president alive. Hallelujah. There are a number of them. Yeah. Let me see. Out of the worst president, let me find the worst. They are there. A lot of them. Some of them have died and they are in hell right now. Like Mobuto Sasaseko, he is in hell, that I know. Yes. And I know that Yadima is also in hell. No two ways about that. Now, the next people to join him in hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey! There is this guy. <laughs> Which country? My God. Kai. Cameroon? Cameroon. Paul Bia. Paul Bia. In fact, he would be the class prefect in hell for all these people. I just did a song, and it's called Bastard Boy Bia. We just finished shooting the video, edited. We will release it on Ghana Way. Mm. Paul Bia, Mr. Bia. Paul Bia is a bastard boy, dotty Bia. You bastard. But be a is a bastard boy. See, I cry for quack quack. Mm -hmm. Ya wounded dwala. Mm -hmm. It's a very emotional song. 
because of the language you speak, they gun you down. Language. You can speak English in Cameroon. Paul Bia will gun you down. How old is Paul Bia? He's heading towards 90 in a year or two. When he's walking, they have to carry like that. He's president for 40 years. Paul Bia doesn't live in Cameroon. He lives in Switzerland. Why? He says the country is ruling that is called Cameroon. The weather is not good for his skin. So he goes to Switzerland and he's in a hotel called what? He's in there. Five star hotel. Chilling. And the Swiss people are happy taking the African money from a bastardized African. It's sad. Now they are trying to break away. The breakaway faction is called Amazonia. Mm. They want to do it because my brethren are being killed. I don't want to go too much into the histories, but the way they came together, they thought that they would have been good. Paul Bia is killing them after taking out Amadou Ayijo, taking over the whole place. The whole place is chaka 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 chaka. chaka. So does Paul Bia make Akufado look good? Yes. Mm. Yes. Akufuado is a bad president. But I would prefer Akufuado to Paul Bia. That is true. Oh, nobody is shooting us in Ghana like that. You can speak any language you want. Nobody shoots you down. There's a certain level of press freedom, even though this man has come to bring it down. Paul Bia, you can't utter a word. Akufuado versus Museveni. Museveni is another dictator, terrible dictator. Very bad dictator. He's a bad man who is also abducting people left, right, and center. Akufuado is better than him. Mm. But I am on Akufuado because he's the president of my country. When Togo, La Côte d'Ivoire, Benin, and all those countries are seemingly smiling in one way or the other, we are still blaming Ukraine, Russia, COVID for our woes. That is an irresponsible president. He's a president who has no wisdom. Nana Kufuado is an arrogant president who will not listen to his, his own party people. That's why I don't like him. He's the worst president we have had in this country. How do you compare Akufuado to Museveni and Paul Bia when we had our independence long before Cameroon was even born? We had our in the ah, Nkrumah went all the way to Boya in Cameroon to be able to bring them together. Nkrumah was the champion of Africa. So if now people are comparing other African presidents to you who had your independence earlier, then you are a joker. You should have been long gone, but you are marking time and marching backwards. That's what it is, my brother. Okay. So you mentioned Dr. Yu and you are not interested in it anymore, right? Thank you very much for reminding me that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Dr. Yu. <laughs> There's a song that I like Dr. Yu and Wakasa. Wakasa, eh, Wakasa, I'm a Ghana, Eddie, and Singura Wakasa, you know, that kind of thing. And it's done by a comedian. Yeah. He's a guy, what do you mean? you will like yeah. the dental style, the uniqueness <laughs> of his dental style. He's always smiling. He excites people. Excites people. I yes. love him. So is, everything that he says, is that true? <laughs> do, you, do you believe all of it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you know he went to KNUST <laughs> yeah, and he did all of that. Everything he says <laughs> yeah. is true. But I was with him at UST mm. and he was at CAT. I think he was one floor down from the studio. Yeah. But he was always in the studio. Mm. Sometimes I go to play my reggae and I wanted all of them out. He would hide at the back trying to fix something. I said, Sir, please, could you excuse me? You know, he was always in the studio. You know, that was what he was. So at a point, I, was, I asked somebody, Ah, Charlie, this guy, into him, a student, say, Ah, yeah, yeah, social show guy be that. Social mm -hmm. science, call mm -hmm. him social show. Social show guy be that. You know, but he was always in the studio and I wondered if he was going for lectures at all. 
He's always laughing. Even alone, he'll be laughing. So I asked another brother, Black Uhuru, wherever you are, big up yourself. I asked him, this guy, is he okay? He's always laughing, even if he's alone, walking alone, laughing. He said, hey, be so he he there be Ire man. No? <laughs> Ire man. I said, well. So when I heard Dr. Ewan, till I saw the photograph, I said, ah, you know me why Clef be this? <laughs> <laughs> why Clef? You know? But you see, this brings us to a certain point where we, we prejudice people. Because he looks the way he looks, somebody will say, oh, then he couldn't have achieved this, he couldn't have achieved that. Mm. I have said it and it was published in Ghana where I would prefer his award to VGMA. I will prefer his award to four awards, five awards. I would prefer that to those awards. Because those awards, you have to vote. You are buying them. Mm. Up to this time, we have not come to that reality that we are selling the awards by voting. Why? Is it hard to understand? If you go to uh, school and buy X plus this plus sigma this and this is equal to this and you are able to crack it and do it and you don't understand basics that people are voting, paying money and you are not even ashamed when they don't win, you tell them, hey, did you didn't vote enough. Hmm. Then what, what kind of award is that? Your Ghana Web Awards is better awards. Next time award me, I'll come and take it. These are awards that will pinpoint people and say, hey, we see that this person is doing good, that person is doing good. But if you guys are also voting, then it's on to you. Any award that goes through voting, especially when people pay money to vote, is a fake award. You are buying the awards. It's better to pinpoint. It's okay, we've shortlisted these people. And our panelists sat and then they chose that person. On the day of the award, okay, the shortlisting, this person, that person, that person. But when our panelists voted, they selected this person. That's an award. Yeah. Not pay and vote. So I have removed myself from any award. That has to do with pay and vote and buy the award. We've spoken to them. They banned me. VGMA banned me before. Because they said I spoke too much. Now I have banned myself. <laughs> so if you are nominated, you are out. No, they can't nominate me. Mm. I did that to RTP. I told RTP, listen, do not nominate me anymore because you guys are still voting. Mm. Of course, in the past we did that. That consciousness did not hit us. We were too excited to have the fans show that they love us. Forgetting that, ah, you know there are some things you do, then you come back and say, ah, Okay, like this, like this. Like a friend of mine, Shatarako, he called me this morning and said, Oh, Rasta. He was all teary. Why go on? I wanted to, you know, the happy person that I've always been. But he was stolen. What happened? Charlie, I bought a parrot too, last week. As I bring the parrot come, the day they are put down for cage where they give them food where they chop. The food said, You know, they like what I do, I they chop. Because that be what they, they chop. My daughter can't tell me, say, the parrot, they, they sick. But the day before, it do me like, make her make the parrot go. Because it only look happy. But I know make it go. My doctor can't tell me, say, they sick. I go look at the parrot die. Then I remember the thing they talk for, the radio top and things. Sometimes you have it in you. But somebody has to wake it up. That's how it is. You should never keep an animal, especially a wild animal, that enjoys his freedom. So Dr. Yuen went to UST. I saw him. Mm. He was also at Contato. He played all... He was like a sitting DJ. Anybody who wasn't there, he came there and sat there and played. Mm. That was the kind of person he was. Yeah. Anyway, your final words before yeah. we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I well, see I'm, you read the comments on Ghana Web a lot. I do. Mm. Yeah. They I mean, Ghana Web, Ghana Web is a very huge platform. Ghana. This is Ghana on the web. People all over the countries, around and beyond, when they want information about Ghana, that's where the, that's the power you guys have. Yeah. See? Sometimes my black pot, 100% of all the stories are from Ghana web. The stories are nice to read and all that. Some of the comments are nauseating. Sometimes I wish that there was a way we could deal with some of them. But I also understand that there is freedom of speech. 
Some people say anything. And we let it go. It's sad. The comments sometimes are very terrible. But I read them. Mm. And some of them are so wise. You can pick up some things out of the trash. You can find something that is nice. And you can use that. So I've grown a thick skin. It doesn't matter what you say about me. My eye is fixed on the goal. My eye is fixed on the mission. And the mission is Pan-Africanism. The mission is Pan-Africanism. Thank you very much, Black Rasta, for coming. And this is The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. Watch us every Monday on all of Ghana Web's digital channels. My name is Ismael Okwe. Be safe.